Uh, it's my pleasure to rise today to speak in support of the No Child Left Inside Act of 2008, which I was privileged uh, to sponsor, and which really, I think, sets a new foundation for focus on environmental education in this country um, as we move forward at a critical time in our nation's history. Before I speak to the merits, I want to make sure I thank uh, Chairman George Miller, Chairman of the Education Labor Committee, for his strong support of the No Child Left Inside Act and for being a champion throughout his career for environmental uh, education. Um, and his involvement in this bill and his strong support uh, signals that we're setting a foundation today to make sure that when it comes time to reauthorize the Elementary and Secondary Education Act next year, that environmental education will be a, a critical and important component um, of that reauthorization. I also want to thank uh, Chairman Dale Kildee, Chairman of the Subcommittee that had jurisdiction uh, over the No Child Left Inside, uh, as well as Chairwoman McCarthy, whose committee has jurisdiction with respect to the, the National Environmental Education Act, which this extends. Uh, we persuaded Chairman Kildee um, to conduct a field hearing in Maryland at the Patuxent Wildlife Refuge, and we did it outdoors. And I'm not sure he'd done that before, but it went off beautifully. Um, we got some very, very powerful testimony from children's and pa children and parents, uh, teachers, environmentalists, uh, and other advocates uh, for this legislation. I want to salute the coalition. A coalition, the No Child Left Inside Coalition, which consists at last count of more than 700 organizations across the country, national organizations, regional organizations, and local organizations, who came together to support this important piece of legislation, representing over 40 million members in these organizations. And that coalition, and this gives you a sense of what this legislation means. That coalition included public health advocates, environmentalists, educators, sportsmen, zoos, parks, and other outdoor education centers, faith-based organizations, as well as businesses. I want to give some special recognition to uh, my home state of Maryland uh, and their role in leading and helping with organize this coalition and to the governor of the state of Maryland, Governor O'Malley, and the Secretary of Education, Nancy Grasmick, uh, for also stepping up and doing at the state level what we're trying to affect across the country. Finally, I have to salute the children and parents who came to the rallies and to the hearings that we've conducted on No Child Left Inside over the last year, because it was in the eyes of those children in their whole language. Uh, and the enthusiasm and the excitement they had when they were outdoor participating in these environmental activities, that was reason enough for us to be steadfast in supporting this legislation and moving it forward. And of course, the many parents who I think look at the fact that their children are spending so much time indoors, on television, the internet, uh, video games, and remember a time when they used to play outside and want to get their kids back out uh, and into nature. Let me just briefly address the contents of No Child Left Inside, what it seeks to do. Uh, it is an extension of the National Environmental Education Act, and it has a number of key components. The first is to enhance the teacher training programs uh, and teacher development programs that have existed and been um, overseen by the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, we've enhanced them in this bill so that uh, there's more of a focus on training teachers on how to deliver environmental education at the school level. We've enhanced it by uh, putting in new provisions to recruit teachers, particularly under, in underserved areas, to enter the field of environmental education. Um, in addition, this bill establishes um, or asks rather that, that states across the country develop environmental literacy plans. 
In other words, a framework on how that state is going to make sure that when children graduate from high school, they have a fundamental awareness of the environment um, and the need to preserve our environment. And lastly, and I think in some ways most importantly, this creates a new grant program, a national capacity environmental education uh, grant program, uh, which will allow local and state education associations, institutions of higher education and nonprofits uh, to apply competitively for grants that would fund a variety of environmental education initiatives, including developing new policy approaches to environmental education, developing curriculum frameworks, academic content standards and achievement standards focused on environmental education, um, and replicating and distributing information about tested and model programs that get children into nature and really have them experiencing the environment. I'm so very pleased because I think this legislation reflects the commitment in this body, in this House of Representatives, in the People's House, but it also reflects the commitment that exists across our nation today to environmental education and to the importance of focusing on the environment and getting our children out and into nature. Uh, there's, there's many, many benefits uh, of, this, of this legislation and the programs that it will fund. I'll, I'll turn to those uh, shortly, Mr. Speaker, but uh, for the moment I'll reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from California.